Hello, VOD people. So we're continuing my quest in learning F sharp. And um, so far, or last time I streamed, we I managed to implement the register equipment workflow. And that was a great success, or rather, <laughs> I think it is. Uh, all the types match up. I haven't written any tests, so I don't really actually know for sure that it works. But yeah, uh, so that's the thing. So this time, I think I'm going to try to implement another um, workflow, uh, basically. Uh, so let's see. Um, register equipment right so after we've registered the equipment what would be another uh prop uh, workflow that would um would be good <laughs> mm. my initial thought is something like just reading the Equipment, but I can't really f say I feel like what kind of logic would that include, really? I mean, it's basically just reading them from the database and maybe, maybe filter out some of the results and maybe remove some of the fields, but that could be done in like the, the database query. So I'm not really certain what would change, to be honest. Maybe the next thing should be like removing one just to do something simple. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe it should be renting one. What I should have done <laughs> is plan this ahead of time <laughs> before I started screaming. <laughs> that would have been too easy, though. Why do it offline and look uh, and look like what I know what I'm doing when I can do it live? <clears throat> Uh, oh, right, I haven't, I'm just going to fix the chat thingy on Twitch. Ugh. There we go. Excellent. <sighs> okay. You know what, uh, let's do, I kind of feel like I want to do like a reserve or rent equipment workflow. Where you're trying to rent the, some of the, uh, one of one piece of the equipment. Yeah, I think I want to do try to do that. Okay. So what I should have done is work continue to continue work on this a bit sooner than I did because I've basically almost forgotten everything we did last time. Uh, so let's have a look. What did we do last time? So. I remember this, that we need the three files, um, or need, need. Uh, we did the three files where the workflow is the first part of the name of the file. Then we've got the public types, which we are going to expose in some kind of API, I, uh, I assume, at some, at some point. The internal types used internally in the workflow and the implementation of the workflow. So for the when register or renting some piece of equipment, we should, uh, let's have a look at the public types first. What did we have here? So we've got for the register equipment, we've got the unvalidated equipment and the equipment registered, which is the event, I believe. Uh, yeah, this is the type of the workflow and equipment registered. Yeah, that's the event. Right, right, right. Should probably have documented this in some way, but let's leave it at this for now. So what are we getting in? 
we want to, re to, to rent a piece of equipment. So we probably need like the ID, the relevant days, and the user doing it basically. Yeah. Okay. That's surmountable. So let's go down here and add a new file. Or not. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, a source file, that's correct. Uh, let's do rent equipment. Yeah, I think that's good. Dot public, oops, public types. Still kind of annoying me that the writer is being this slow. I am, I suspect it's because I'm running this on a M1 Mac with a new chipset and that is just not optimized. It's a bit weird though that it should have this much of an impact because I haven't really seen that in, or have I? That's a bit, just a bit strange that it has this much impact. That's all I, all I can say. Uh, let's call this equipment management dot rent equipment. I'm just gonna have a quick look. Okay. Because he does that for the private parts, right? Yeah. If those are internal modules instead of a namespace, right? I should really have looked up the the actual difference on on how to use module and namespaces in uh, in uh, F sharp, but I. Haven't. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Unvalidated. Rent request. That's what we're going to call this. And it's going to have a... A... Uh, user ID. Oh, user ID, actually, yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, it's gonna have a equipment ID. Uh, that's gonna be an equipment ID. And start date of start date and end date of end date actually and these are actually going to be ready for us okay this is nice oh no actually these are not going to be that at all so let's just do like a type red no rent request and let's just copy these over here right away because instead of this unvalidated one, these should all be like, um, uh, I think these are GUIDs all the way. Yeah, this should be a daytime. Um, these should all be um, simple values, or, or rather, primitive values. Types, yeah. Okay, so after that, we got a uh, rent request with proper dates, which is validated. And uh, we got a valley validation error, which is just a validation error of string, like so. And uh, yeah, we've got the error type for the uh, rent equipment. Equipment 
error, which can be a validation, a validation error, like so. And the last one, which is rent equipment, which really takes a unvalidated rent request and outputs a result that is either Uh, e come on, Equi um, rent request accepted or a rent equipment error, like so. Uh, we also need to define the um, rent request accepted type which is gonna be Hmm, there's probably going to be like a, um, should I, yeah, I think I should do that actually. So, should probably have all of these, should it be simple or... Yeah, it is over here. So yeah, we're, we're gonna keep it sim, uh, looking black, uh, simple types, and it also should like have like a uh, reservation ID. Yeah, of the type reservation ID, and we're gonna define that. So we're gonna go into common simple types, then we're gonna define it up here. Got the equipment ID, we got the user ID, and we're gonna have a, a reser reservation ID, which is a private reservation ID of quid. Then we're gonna copy this module, like so, go all the way down here. Put that here, and we're gonna rename all these to reservation. Yeah. Okay. So that's the public types out of the way. <clears throat> uh, then there are some internal types over here yeah right that's the validated equipment I think I put this yeah so this is like a validated rent request but they should go into the internal types and not the public types Add a new file. Uh, let's call this uh, rent equipment dot internal types dot fs. Be a source file like so. Oh right. Um, yeah, it's going to be a module, and it's going to be internal. Yeah, and then none of this is going to fly, so we're just going to do this instead. <clears throat> equipment manage. Oh crap, I think I named it incorrectly last time. Yeah. No. No management. Yeah. What did I think it was called? Manager. Okay, whatever. Management. Dot register. Equipment. Equipment dot internal types 
That's a mouthful, but here we go. There we go. Then we're going to take the um, validated thingy over here and just oh, paste that in here like so. And we're going to have to open the common types thingy like so. And um, let's just have a quick look see over here. Yes, we're going to define the, the the functional. So we need to like validate uh, rent request, which is going to be unvalidated rent request, and then output a validated rent request, or rather a result. It's either that or a validation error, like so. Uh oh, uh, type. Gonna have a create events in here too. Uh, should we come back to that? Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that later. So now we're in need of the third file according to this structure rent equipment dot uh, implementation, like so. Yeah, it's gonna be a module, it's gonna be internal uh, that all is not gonna fly so let's just uh, go over here copy this paste it in here and change this to implement implementation there we go if I remember correctly Yeah, I'm just going to implement the first one. Where would you go? Uh, internal types. Uh, va validate rent request. Validate rent request of type validate. Did I know? Validate rent request. This is going to be a function which takes an unvalidated rent request. No, no, not validated, validate. Like so. <clears throat> so the Let's see, should this, if it's validated, yeah, it should have like an um, reservation ID of reservation ID, right? So reservation ID should be a reservation ID dot create. That doesn't take an input. Uh, yep, yeah. just outputs it. Uh, then the next thing is, should probably have that over here. Let's just put it right there. Implementation over here. Uh, reser, that's the reservation ID. Then it's the user ID. Uh, how do we val validate? Well, we need to validate that the user is correct. That is at some point going to be an async operation. But for now, we just need to uh, validate the user. So in our internal types, we're going to define, uh, what are we going to call it? Verify user ID. And it's going to take a should take a quid or a string. I think a quid. Oh, crap root. <clears throat> uh, just a second.
bound to happen sooner or later. Managed to spill some liquid onto my keyboard. Let's just do this. Let's see here. Bit uncertain whether or not. Yeah, that definitely is. Okay. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> This is a bit of an alternative stream, I'd say. Just bear with me for a little second here while I try to pry some of these keys off. <laughs> Just gonna jerry rig this. Maybe I don't actually have like a key cap puller or anything, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to pull out some of the key, key uh, off some of the keycaps without having to start at the edge which is kind of a gambit but we'll try do this hey 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 we're not so bad at all okay yeah this is fine this should be fine. Let's just... I have this lovely keyboard where all my keys are blank. Actually, no text on them at all. Which is very confusing when other people <laughs> try to use my keyboard. Let's put this key on the right way. Here we go. Okay, and the other one, which was that one. Yeah, uh, lost it again. Uh, well, it's actually a combination of two or three. I think that's annoying. Let me match with my incredible keycap puller, <laughs> consisting of two paper clips which actually work surprisingly well. Well, that should suffice. Okay, let's just give this a bit of a... Uh, I'm actually looking down here, I really should pull off all these keys sometime and, I don't know, at least blow some air through here. Kind of collating a lot of dust. Or, alternatively, I could just ignore it and try to forget what I saw. Okay, let's see here. Let's put this back on. There we go. Thank God these keyboards are built like friggin' tanks. Which is one of the best things about this keyboard, I'd say, in general. These are... The quality is friggin' fantastic. I mean, the, the plastics they've used are top-notch. They are really robust. Quite, quite, quite heavy, but really robust. So, really... really f <laughs> they're, they're very expensive, but they feel friggin' expensive, too. So, that's something, at least. So we'll see if it breaks. I really hope it doesn't because I really love this keyboard. Anyway, and they're kind of hard to get hold of actually. Let's try that again without spilling any liquid on it. 
that went well. Let's get back to programming. <laughs> Verify user ID. Uh, it takes a GUID and it returns a, it could return a bool. It could return a result. It's just gonna return a bool for now, I think. Yeah. Oh, and we actually need to import this. Import missing references, there we go. Uh, then we need to say uh, that this actually needs to have verify user ID as an input, like so. Then we're gonna go here and say that here too, verify user ID. And then we're gonna do that as a first step, I think. Um, how do we, how's the input? Is it, it's already a GUID. Yeah, like, I think that makes sense, doesn't it? I think it does. I think so, yeah, sure. So we already know it's good. So the first thing we do is um, call verify, very, you know, we, we start with, we start off with the unvalidated re rent request. Uh, the input. User ID, we pipe that into verify user ID, uh, that's the one. But now we're getting a Boolean back from this method or function, and that's not what we want at all. So we need to convert it back to Well, this would have been a bit easier if this didn't return a bool directly, but a result. But I think we're gonna leave it like this for now, just for the experiment's sake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another function here called, um, Hmm. I think we're going to do like um, a very fine user ID and we're going to shadow that one. And we're going to say that instead of the default implementation, it's still going to take a user ID, but instead it's going to do if verify user ID with user ID. If that's true. Yeah, uh, then return an okay with the user ID. Uh, else, and uh, you put that over there, you return an error with a error message, I guess? Yeah, user ID not found, that's good. So now this returns a result, and that's something we can work with. Uh, so if we have a look, <laughs> how did I solve this over here? Because I used fail if invalid, right? Yeah. So I mapped the error to validation error, right? Uh, because this returns just a string whether or not it's a, yeah, right. And this returns just a string. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <clears throat> so uh, we do result dot map error. And if it, if it's an error, we translate it to a validation uh, request, a uh, validation error, like so. And I think we're actually just gonna steal this, um, 
this function over here. Let's just steal this. This, this could probably... No, we're going to keep it here for now. Because there's actually a bit of type information in here. But this could probably go into like a central repository of util functions at some point. Uh, but we're going to keep it in, uh, in local for now. Uh, fail if invalid. And the reason for that is there's actually a reference to validation error here. And this validation error is specific for this workflow. So the validation error might actually differ between the different workflows. And if it does, um, that would have to be like in generic input. So this is a bit easier. Okay. So that's the user ID. Let's go back to the internal types. And next we need to create an in equipment ID, equipment ID. Right. And this is actually much of the same thing. So we've got the unvalidated request thingy with an equipment ID, which is a quid. And once again, we need to create like a, um, a type, verify equip, ugh, equipment ID, liquid to bool. <clears throat> And uh, this needs to take that as dependency, like so. Uh, verify equipment ID, like so. So this is going to be wrong because this needs to be verify equip equip oh, Jesus equipment ID. Yes. I love that I started a project with a word that I have really have a really hard time typing. I, <laughs> I can't understand why I thought that was a good idea. Verify equip equipment ID. So it's basically the same thing here as it were with the uh, verify user ID function. So we're going to change this to verify equipment ID. I'm going to change this to be an equip. No, 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 no. What is you doing? Oh, I think, okay, yeah, that's fair. Equipment ID, like so. I guess it's going to be equip. Equipment ID not found. This is going to verify the equipment ID like so. It's going to resolve map error. That's going to be a validation error of some sort. And then lastly, it's going to fail. Uh, we do this this way. Fail if invalid. Right. Next up, start date, start date. Uh, we start with the invalidated requests uh, start date, which is a date time. And we pass that into start date dot create. And once again, we fail fail if invalid uh, does this already return a validation error a is validation error how do we know that it is generic Okay, so create actually returns an okay, but it doesn't really specify, so it can be, can be anything, okay. So in this case, it is a validation error because it thinks it is, right? I think we're actually gonna copy this line all down here, which makes this a string. Yeah, that makes more sense, I think. It's so funny seeing F-sharp kind of figuring out all my types. It's, uh, it's 
Cool. End date. Now this is going to be interesting. So unvalidated end date. And we're going to... Oh, no, that's not what we want. <laughs> uh, we're going to start by passing that into end date. Dot create, which also takes a start date. Ho, ho. Which is this one. Uh, no, it ain't. It's this one. Right? That's all you need. Uh, start date and the end date, which is just in date time. And then you get an end date. Right. Uh, and then we're gonna, just going to copy these two last, last two lines over here. Which is gonna fail if invalid. That's good. Uh, that I think that's all the things. Yep. Oh, actually, <clears throat> no. Yeah, this makes sense. Yep. 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 Okay. So. Um, now that we've got all this in hand, I think we're ready to just create the. Um, the object, isn't it? Are, are we? Yeah. So we're going to use, um, we're going to put it into a validated rent request of type validated, um, rent request. And we're going to, uh, we're going to try this again. Uh, we're going to say equipment. No. Reservation ID is going to be reservation ID. And can I just... Um, no, can auto-generate apparently. Um, let's just bring up the type here. Nope, not that one, but this one. User ID is user ID. The equipment, equipment ID is equipment ID. The start date is start date. And the end date is the end date, like so. Good. Lastly, uh, we just return the validated TED rent request, like so. I once again <laughs> managed to type equipment the wrong way. Okay. Uh, user ID looks to be right. Uh, nope. Because we just verify it. That's good, though. Yeah, let's verify it. But we also need to create it. So user ID dot create, like so. Uh, apparently that's wrong in some way. Um, do, 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 do. Let's just double check this. This. Uh, how do I? How did I change it to an error of a string? So we might actually need to change that too, like so. And this is going to be a result. Uh, what what does that actually return? Uh, create. It returns a result. Okay. So this thing needs to be a result.bind of user ID create. Do I need to put this? No, I shouldn't have to put this in anywhere. Do I? Um, okay. What's uh, What does this... Th what does it say about the error? Type mismatch. Expecting a function from GUID to result, but is given a string. Okay.
expecting. The type system grid does not match the type string. That is correct. What does create uh, expect? Oh, user ID actually expects it to be a string because one of the validation pieces, things it does is verify that it's an actual, hmm, interesting. That is interesting. Do we want to keep it like that? I think yes. Uh, let's just let's just map this result dot map, and um, can I just do like this? I don't think that's gonna work, but let's see. Uh, okay, expecting a string. But it was given, okay, so the error type is wrong. Why is the error type wrong? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> This maps it to a validation error, right? So what we're getting here is a string and validation error. That makes sense. Yes. But this is complaining. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Oh, so the... the uh, <laughs> I, I know that this is a thing in F sharp. The, the, the errors are a bit cryptic sometimes because it, there's an error here that says um, that there's a type mismatch. It was expecting a string to result of user ID and validation error, but it was given a string to result of user ID and string. So the, the error type of the error in the result is different. It's, it's ex ex expecting a validation error, but it's getting a string. Okay, that makes sense. In, in we think are not, uh, that make, that makes sense that those are not the same. So it says the type validation error does not match the type string, which is fair enough. But the error is not with this function per se. It's this one that's the complaining because this is returning a result. You're not going to see this because it's an overlay that doesn't show up in OBS. But the create function on user ID returns a result of user ID and string because it returns a string with the explanation of why the creation of the user ID failed. But result.bind is expecting the, the type of the error to be validation error because that's the type of result that we're actually piping through all these steps. It's something, it's a uh, it's a something and a, and a, uh, and a validation error. The the error type have to match at all times because it's the only the okay case that can change between each map. That's why we always map the error because we need it to go back to being a validation error to make this work. Um, so when we're doing this map here. We, uh, no, no, sorry. When we're doing this bind, uh, we need the this in this thing that we're binding. We needed to return the same kind of error that we already have. If not, it's not going to work because of logic. Um, it it's fine when we when we um, only use the map, for example, because that doesn't change the the error case. That only operates on the OK case. But the bind works on both of them uh, in in practice, and that's why it needs one of them to it needs the the error case to be uh, matching. But that's not too difficult. Um, we just need to pipe this to, through a. That's not how you do it. Um, <laughs> uh, like this, result dot map error. We know this validation error validation error like so 
but this is also going to complain because it doesn't know which one to do first. So we're going to do this. And I was hoping that would fix it all. <laughs> uh, let's see. Why is this complaining? Multiple things. The type string to result user ID string doesn't match result A, B. Okay. That, that makes sense. Those are not the type, same types. Uh, well, how are these different? It lists two kinds of errors. Okay. So I think let's have a look at this error message. Expecting a string to result. I think there's something wrong with the stuff that I'm doing here. Let's try to define this a bit better. So this will take, I just have to think about this. This will, this will receive the okay case, right? Yeah. So that's gonna be a, a, a user ID of some kind. And we're gonna, we're going to we're going to start off with that so the user id is going to be piped to user id create and this is going to solve all thing yeah okay the, so that makes this work but this down here is still complaining because the type validation error does not match the type string right yes because this is trying to do the mapping but we are already doing this inside of the bind so this is not needed Right, okay, okay, this makes sense, <laughs> finally. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, I think it does. Uh, let's see, does this, yeah, that's the user ID now. This is complaining because it doesn't receive an input, that makes sense. So equipment ID, like so. Uh, but we're still butting uh, up against the same error here where we do the mapping, uh, we need to do the result dot bind where we do equipment ID dot create. And I'm gonna certain what this actually returns. It's uh okay, let's see. Uh, it just returns equipment ID. Okay, that's easy. Um, what? <laughs> uh, okay, right, right. Okay, this is interesting. We need to transform it to equipment ID, but equipment ID is the creator, the create function actually just creates a new one, not one from an existing, um, okay. That is interesting, right? Hmm. I think there are two different options here. There is one where you specify an existing ID and it just kind of verifies that it looks like an equipment ID. And there is one where it 
it doesn't receive an existing equipment ID and it just and it just returns a new one. Which could be a thing. This actually makes me think this whole user ID thing, shouldn't it really, shouldn't this, shouldn't this verify user ID thing, shouldn't that re actually receive the user ID as a, no, because that's part of the validation really. Yeah, hmm, interesting. I think I'm actually gonna change the name of this create function for equipment ID, where creating an equipment ID, let's have a look at the user ID one. Okay, because you got this thing going where it tries to parse it. And I think that makes more sense. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it for the reservation ID first. So instead of the create function, instead of just creating a new one, we're gonna we're gonna call this generate, which is gonna signify that you generate a new ID. And then we're gonna copy this um, this create function from user ID, and we're gonna just change all these user IDs. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Let's try that again. And we're just going to change these to reservation ID. Like this. And this is going to be a reservation ID. And then there's going to be a format exception where the reservation ID, and we're going to uppercase this because that's nice, must be a valid good. And the same goes for this. And. Yeah, we're just gonna. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, we're gonna copy this again. Uh, let's do this. And we're gonna go to equipment ID. Uh, equip. Oh, crap. Have I written? Yeah. Equipment. Wow. And I haven't even noticed. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be two create functions. It's going to oh wow, uh, it's going to freak out. So let's make this a generate one, and this is going to say equipment. This is going to see say e equipment. Is that what I've been calling it? Apparently yes. Wow. And then we're going to rename this one. This one, another one. This two dialogues you're not going to see. Equipment. There we go. Wow. It is. Yeah. Just rename all the other things. Wow. And uh, the module two. Going to fix that. I, I, I've re even written that wrong. Wow. How how did I manage this? Um, okay, we're gonna just go ahead and hope that this fixes things. Uh, there's a double one. Equipment management. Not common. Oh oh, oh oh, has it changed something? It shouldn't. No. But this is the one you're in. Is this? Yeah, okay. Wait, what? Why did it do that? Wow, there's even typos in here. Duration. Wow. Ah, oh, this is the kind of stuff that gives me... Yeah, okay. So, equipment.create is now going to do the right thing. And we need basically need to do the same thing as we did before. Um... But if we might want to do like um, 
that create equipment ID. And we're just gonna do uh, just one input, which is the equipment ID. And then in here you do equipment ID like that, and you pass it into equipment ID dot create, which you then pass into result map error and a validation error. Like so, and then you do a bind over here where you say create equipment ID, like so. And that doesn't even match up correctly, apparently. Yeah, right, because it's a uh, GUID still, right? So we need to do the same result. Oop. First, we need to do one of these result.map, and we change it to a string, like so. Okay, uh, let's just move this to a separate function too. So we're going to do this. And we're going to call this let create user ID, uh, user ID, like so user uh, this. I'm going to go back a bit and we're going to change this, this, and then we're going to do that over here. Uh, cre oh, create user ID. There we go. Uh, right. So for the reservation ID, where do you go? There you go. You're going to be a generate. And I also think that there should be another error um, inside of this implementation, I think, where it's supposed to generate a... Yeah, here we go. So this will now be generate. Okay, great. Just close that. And this is complaining because... It references that, and the expression was it was expected to have a type of result. Right, right, right. We need uh, to return a result here. Um, so we're gonna just wrap this in an OK, and that's gonna be OK. So that's the validation completed. So. Uh, let's just have a quick peek at this over here. Um, then we have the create events, and it does the thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So once we have like the validated rent request, um this is going to have a lot of a lot of dependencies and i think i remember how to handle this correctly Do we pass them in? What I don't remember quite exactly is, do we pass in just the finished functions, I guess? Uh, let's see. No, these are the internal types. Hmm. Send order acknowledgments, blah, blah, blah. Is that a public type, the, the final thingy? Place order, yeah.
So the, the place order thing <clears throat> is just a simplified um, it's just the final thing itself. It's not the complete uh, the signature doesn't have all the dependency listed. <laughs> Which, if I look in the API thingy, it creates the dummy, um, the dummy dependencies. Okay, so it does implementation to place order. Right, right. So it sets up the workflow and the, the final workflow. Uh, let's see, it looks like uh, the stream fell uh, or disconnected again. So for those of you watching this on YouTube, you'll be just fine. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, this does. Sorry. Yeah, this takes everything, basically. Yeah, yeah. So if we head into the implementation the, uh, and find the place order function, it should just take a hell of a lot of inputs. Yeah. Yeah, it takes all of them. Right, 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 right. And this place order is defined in here. Right. But how does it reconcile those types, though? Is there like a place order thing in here? Place order. Order. No. Is there in here? No. So how can this claim... How can that claim to be the same type, though, when it very clearly isn't? Oh, no, 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 because it returns the place order, of course, so it builds the whole thing inside of here. Yes, that makes a hell of a lot more sense. So it returns the thing, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense a lot. That makes a lot more sense, right? Oh, okay, okay. Now, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, uh, we've got the validation nailed down. The next step is taking that validated rent request, which is defined in the internal types, yeah, um, we need to, so we, we've validated that these data are correct. Then we need to validate that the equipment is available at the given time that they want to rent it. And that's basically going to be a function that says, um, 
Is that going to be a separate thing? Yeah, I think it is. Because it's not going to return a validation there for one. It's going to return something else. <clears throat> uh, this is going to be a... Um, what's this action? It's trying to confirm rent period confirm rent period yeah and it takes a validated validated rent request and it outputs a, a result that's either What does it output? It should output something else than a valid validated rent request to make sure that when we enter into the create events part that we're actually getting a correct kind of data. So this is not just validated a validated rent, rent request. Um, It is a reservation. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is going to be a reservation error, I think. We're going to have to need to define what these are. But I think that we're going to do that in the public types. So we got a type that is a reservation error, which is just a reservation error of string again, the string. This is gonna probably gonna be expanded. Like uh, later, we could expand this to include like, yeah, you're trying to reserve, uh, make a reservation for this uh, time slot, but it's actually taken uh, for then this time slot overlaps with the one that you've requested. That that's, that that won't work, and that we could include that metadata inside of the reservation error. We're not going to do that now, but that's a possibility for later. And then we're gonna uh, let's just put this on a separate line. Uh, right away. Uh, I think we need to do this actually. And uh, we're gonna say it's gonna be a reservation of reservation error, like so. So that's gonna be that thing. Um, so this is also gonna need a Uh, verify time slot, which will take a start date, an end date, and it'll return What should it return? It could return a bool saying that whether or not it's available, but hopefully it'll return conflicts. But the question becomes, should we add that later or do we want to add it now? And I think we want to add, add it later. And it's this is one of the things that's nice with F Sharp and it's quite strict type system is that whenever we, we're, we change this later, we are going to get compilation errors, which means that we're going to know for a certainty where um, we need to update our code to make it work again. So say, for example, that this for now, we're just going to make this return a bool, right? At some point further down the line, we're going to make this return like a, a list of um, colliding uh, time periods or whatever. 
uh, or yeah. So if, for example, someone is trying to re to reserve the equipment for a time period of four days, but the first day that they're trying to reserve it is it's already taken, and that, so and that's the case for the last day too, which means that it's overlapping with two different uh, periods. We're we can list those and say that yeah it's it's taken until this date and it's also taken from this date so this is going to that, that's going to change it to, to be some a, some other type than a bool a list of something basically and when we change that we also need to update the reservation error because now it won't just return a string maybe it we might want to update it to return something more complex like a for example the list including the error error string that we did before but we we know that we're gonna have to update that, uh, or when we when we, when we change the the error type of verify time slot, we all get a reminder that maybe we should update reservation error too because those both of those functions will need to be updated for this to continue to work. But the change stops there because reservation error is again like the uh, the container for the error. Uh, so what the container contains might change. So we need to change that, but the container itself is not going to change. It's still going to be a reservation error of some kind. It's just the data inside of it's going to change. So there might be some other code elsewhere that we'll need to change too, because this we've changed the contents of the container. That's going to not going to be an issue with this thing, but it will very clearly, it, it, it'll help us remind us what code we need to update without, uh, um, before we can can move on without breaking any of our, our existing code, and this is nice, especially when you consider things like exceptions in C sharp or Java or whatever, where basically everything is just a try catch, and a lot of the time you're just catching like a gen like a very base um, uh, like a very like a very base ex exception, maybe just exception itself, which means that you won't necessarily notice the difference unless you're actually checking for types, and you re you don't really do that very often in in C sharp code at least because you don't really know which exceptions you might receive from a function because you don't know even if you check the code of that function that function might call other functions which also might throw exceptions so the the <laughs> it's like a rabbit hole where you can go where you you basically have to go through all the code that that code's calling to make sure that it's not you, that you're not receiving any exceptions that you're not not expecting to so yeah that that's that's the whole problem with exceptions basically and even in a language like go where you do return the errors but you return it as um as a one of the return values go supports multiple return values it doesn't have tuples but it feels like kind of returning like a tuple from a from a function uh the problem is however you can't really type check the error um it's basically it's most often like just like a uh generic uh error type that's used for almost all errors and it's not really the point either. You're not supposed to really type check the error that you get in Go code. Um, but it's the same thing. If you change the error, uh, that might not be very apparent for anyone calling that function at any stage, really. Either directly or via some other function that uses it internally. Anyway, we're going to keep this verify time slot as a bool to return a Boolean. So when we're going to confirm the rent period, we're going to do the, ooh, we're going to verify the time slot. And we're going to do this. Uh, so verify time slot, at some point, this will probably at least return an async result because we're uh, going to talk to the database. And it might also return a result at some point um, because the call to the database might fail or something like that. Uh, so we're going to return that error. And of course, it might not just be a bool sometime in the future. So we're probably going to end up with a very much different and more complex return type here. But when the day to day comes, 
will be safe because F# -sharp will make sure that we handle all that. Anyway, uh, let's go to our implementation. And we're going to define confirm rent period. And it's going to be of a type called confirm rent period. Like so it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a horrible joke. I still love it. Uh, verify time slot. And it's also going to take the validated rent request. And that's going to be it. It's going to have some code inside of it, which we define by doing this. Uh, one other thing that we actually need to define is the the reservation. I see that the reservation is apparently already a type. Um, Let's, um, hmm. should we call this like a confirmed? This reservation, is that actually used anywhere? I don't think so. No, this is just like generic type of a reservation. <clears throat> does this belong in the compound types? I think it does. I think it does. But... I'm kind of skeptical. How many usages does the equipment thing have? One. Reservation. This one. Okay, that is interesting to say the least. So both of these are not really in use. None of these compound types. That is really interesting. So the reservation. I also see that we have like a... A comment and it is settled. Um, I think we're going to keep the comment, but it's settled. Ooh, not really a fan of that, I have to admit. Should we have a comment, though? We can expand you with uh, that later, which is, again, a really nice part of the type system. We need to be very explicit. So if we add another field here later, all our code will basically break, and we have to fix it before it will compile again. So it forces us to make sure we're always um, treating the types correctly. So yeah, um, we're not gonna use that reservation. Uh, we're gonna define our own. So reservation. And it's basically gonna be all of this, uh, but it's now been verified basically. So. Um, we've checked with the database that this time period, for example, is correct. And we've verified that the user ID exists, equipment exists. Um, we should also, um, we should also check that the reservation ID doesn't exist in the database already. We don't do that with the equipment because we basically expect the quid to always be unique, which is as far as you can prom or or um, guarantee it, it is guaranteed to be unique. Um, I guess there is like a like a cosmic chance that it might collide, but it's basically ne ne negligible. I managed to say that word in the first try. Okay. No, we're gonna we're gonna leave it like this. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. I'm I'm a bit uncertain whether or not this actually needs to um 
Yeah, it needs to exist. I, I think it does. So it's pretty easy to change it later if it's if it doesn't. So uh, uh, time slot available available is going to be the result of uh, validated no verify verify time slot yeah but the variable not the type combined with validation nope validate nope validated dot start date validated end date uh, I think that's what it needs that's gonna return a bool if time slot available uh, then we're gonna return a okay with a reservation. So let reservation be a type of reservation, like so. And if we, oh, uh, if we have a look over here, can we, maybe we should just do like this, and then go back here, paste that in. Oh, not like that. Then we're gonna uh, do that a few times. And let's just select this thing here and do, whoa, nope, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, right, okay, I thought that would, there we go, that's what I meant to do. And then just type equals, and then we're going to fill this in. So validated, oh, actually, this is the same too. <laughs> validated, uh, request here. Yeah. And uh, let's leave it at that. And then we'll just do um, uh, reservation ID, user ID, equ oop, equipment ID, start date, and end date. There we go. And we're going to return a uh, reservation instead of an OK, uh, where reservation. Did I type that wrong? Somewhere? Reservation. Reser. Hey. Shun. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ignore that for now. Else. Return an error. And that error is going to be one of reservation error. Which takes a string, which is um, uh, time slot not available. Ava ava uh, <laughs> available. There we go. Uh, yeah. I think that's right. It feels right. Okay. So then we've confirmed the rent period. We've created a reservation from that. And the last thing that we do is create the events to indicate that we've confirmed that everything should be right. So uh, this is an attempt, and it's called create events. It takes a reservation, a reservation, and it returns a result, I think. Does it? No, I don't think so. It might not. Let's see. Create events. It does not. It, ooh, whoops. <laughs> uh, let's see. It returns. Um, what, what did I call it? Uh, rent request accepted. Now we're actually going to change that name. Now that we've made the... So this is going to be reservation made. And that's what this is going to return. Reservation made. And it's going to take a reservation. This basically mirrors that. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So there's a lot of lot of copying of all these types, and that makes sense at this point because all of them are basically the same. But at some point later, we might add extra information to the reservation. Say, uh, for example, there might be some kind of criteria that's specifically for some pieces of equipment um, that's added to the reservation for some reason. Um, and that might not be part of the validated request, which is why they are different. So for example, when we validate that the time slot, um, we, or for example, the criteria might change. So it might say, okay, if you try to make a reservation for something and that reservation, uh, and that reservation, Uh, the end of the reservation overlaps. I don't know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, for some reason, if the end of the reservation overlaps with a new period, you might say, well, if the period if it's just one day, you might let the reservation through, but with a comment saying this reservation was one day shorter than you requested because of the next thing, the next period. So that, at that point, reservation would have an extra comment on it, uh, saying that well, there was a we could we created the reservation, but there is some extra info here, some extra info, and that would be make it different from a validated uh, rent request, which would not have that info. So now they're the same, but they're the the intention to or where they're supposed to be used and what, what the intention of uh, not the intention, but like the the purpose of the type. Of the types are different right now they they look the same but they might differ sometime in the future and that's why you want to keep them separate because just because they look alike now doesn't mean they have the they serve the same purpose in the in the code uh yeah so that same goes for reservation made like we might in create events we might add some extra information um that's not present in the reservation itself, which actually makes me think think of something. There is a specific criteria that says you can some equipment have a, like a limitation of how many days you're able to um, uh, uh, oh come on uh, how many days you're able to rent something. And we do not verify that. So that should also be the thing. Do we want to do that now before? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is a great time to do it. So instead of the confirm rent period, that was, that's where it makes sense. So that function is already being expanded. So it made sense to, you, <laughs> to have, have a function that in only the one uh, function call. So in addition to verifying that the time slot is available, we should also verify that it, the you don't you're not trying to rent something for a longer period than what you're allowed to. And mm, 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 how do we want to verify that? On the one hand, we could request, give me the uh, maximum allowed rent period of uh, a piece of equipment. And then do the comparison locally and say, yeah, these, these should be compared like this. Or we could ask for a function that um, that does that verification for us, like saying verify that this time period does not exceed, <clears throat> or that this rent period does not exceed any limitations. I feel like the first one is the best one, where you basically say, I've got an equipment ID, could you please uh, give me the maximum allowed rent uh, or uh, ma ma maximum allowed rent period for this. I think that makes the most sense. And then do the comparison locally inside of the confirm rent period thing. Yeah, I think it does. So we're, we're going to do that. So uh, here we are going to add a new type called 
get equipment uh, rent duration rent duration limit. These are a bit verbose, some of these names, and that's Spain in, intentional in that it's better that they're verbose and you actually understand what they do than having some cryptic shorter name that doesn't really serve any purpose, then it's less typing. But I don't know, it feels kind of... That's what, we, what you got auto-completion for. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, this is going to take an equipment ID and it'll return a int, an int. And it will go right in here. Uh, get equipment duration limit, which means we need to update this. So at once, we're getting red squigglies all over the place in here because this is not matching up any, anymore. Um, because the uh, validate rent request is now being mapped to the get equipment rent duration limit function, and that does not work this way, uh, in this manner. So, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> this is F sharp helping us out. Oh. Just a second, I'm just gonna <clears throat> fill my glass with some th something to drink. All without spilling on my keyboard again. Which officially makes me a grown up. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Um, so this is get. Egg, oh, wow. Equipment rent duration limit. Um, actually, I feel like we should do this first. Yeah, um, I'm actually considering should we just it doesn't really make a difference, uh, code-wise, but it feels more correct to to request the dependencies in the ma in the order that we're using them. It doesn't really make any difference when it get, uh, in regards to the code. It just makes sense in my head, I guess. Uh, this, yeah. So if we do this. That makes sense. Yeah. So instead of here. Um, Rent duration limit. Uh, and that's going to be um, yeah. Rent duration limit not exceeded. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get equipment rent duration limit, and we're, the way we're going to do that is by doing validated rent request dot equipment ID. We're going to pass that in to that one. That's going to give us a bool in return. Um, and that bool, no, it's going to give us an int in return. And that int we're going to use for the validation. So we're going to say here, let. Well, mm, yeah, well, no, yeah, sure, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, validate rent duration. It's going to take a, uh, a start, uh, a start date, an end date, and a 
limit. Yeah. What it's going to do is it's going to take uh, end date value, which is just going to be end date passed into end date dot value and let end uh, let start date value be uh, actually we don't need the type value in here we can just shadow the, the uh, variables which is something I really like it just it, it base it works best in strong type languages where you get an error if you do something wrong provided the type changes every time you shadow it if you if it doesn't change type then it kind of might screw you over which maybe hmm that's an interesting limitation should shadowing only be allowed if the type changes that's interesting that's a type save save that's kind of a type save shadow mechanic hmm Anyway, <laughs> food for thought. So the nice thing about F sharp is, of course, that um, it doesn't know what start date and end date, the types of start date and end date is, but because of the parameter names, I as a person or as a uh, uh, intellectual human <laughs> um, know what they are. They, they're a start date and end date, and I know what that means in regards to this because we're always talking about start, start and end dates. But once I use this value, this start day, uh, this start day value, as an input to this, F sharp knows that okay, this value function only takes a start date, the uppercase start date type, and that means that this start date over here needs to be a start date type because that's the only way that this function call could work, which is, mwah. I love it. Anyway, um, after getting both of those values, <coughs> uh, we're going to call this um, rent period. And that's just going to be the end date minus the st uh, start date, which is um, going to give us a time span. And the last thing that we're going to do is if, uh, no, we're just going to return the Boolean value, I think. Yeah. So uh, rent period dot days. Uh, let's see. Uh, is equal, hmm, how do you do equal to or less? Less or equal to? Okay, that seems to work. Uh, less or equal to limit. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, So this takes a validate rent request with the validated uh, rent request start date and the validated rent request end date. Then it'll receive the limit from there and we're getting some kind of error, unexpected arguments. Uh, yep, because we're not going to call that function. That's uh, that's not a function at all. Uh, validate rent duration is what we're going to call. And that will give us a Boolean value over here. And if time slot is available, uh, if rent uh, duration is not exceeded, and, no, that doesn't mean, and, 
and re- times that available, then return a reservation. If not, okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Uh, we're actually going to change this to a uh, match. So we're going to put these two into a tuple, which we create by doing this, I think. I'm not a bit uncertain uh, on the tuple syntax. I, th- I think this is right. Ugh. And then we're going to do one of these pipes. And then if if it if this is false and whatever this is, do one thing. If okay, let's let's do that thing actually. Uh, so let's delete this, uh, paste that in here. Actually, do this. Um, time slot not available. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, actually, let's just do that for that one. So that's if that one's false. If this one's false, and whatever that one might be, um, let's just paste this in and. <coughs> Actually, we might want to redefine reservation error to just be one of those two. Reservation error? Yeah. So, what if instead this is either um, rent duration exceeds limit or time slot not available. So instead, this is either going to be rent duration exceeds limit or time slot not available. And when none of those are the case, we'll just do a default one, which means um, a default one, which is the one that we want in all of the cases, like so. Kind of, (laughs) feels kind of weird, like defaulting to like the, the happy path which is interesting. (coughs) (coughs) So what we're going to do instead is we're going to change this to be explicitly if it's false, false. So only in the case that the both false, um, no, if they're both true, right? True and true, like so. So if they're both true, time slot is available, and the rent duration limit is not exceeded, do this. If the first one's false, do this, and if the second one's false, do this. And that should account for all the different cases. And if there are some cases that are not covered by any of these um, patterns, um, F-sharp should give an error. I'm like 99% certain it will. Look at Tesla doing this. Does it say anything? Well, it's giving a warning over here. Uh, What's this? Incomplete pattern. Yeah, that's the one. On this expression, for example, the value whatever false may indicate a case not covered by this pattern. So it's not not an error, but it's a warning. Saying that, yeah, you're not covering all the cases here. Maybe you should. And uh, now we are with this pattern matching thingy magic. Okay, so that checks the uh, the thingy. Um, There there might be some error in this logic. 
uh, I'm kind of certain that there is, um, or, or there might be, um, yeah, so, ooh. but uh, we'll leave that for now. Um, I don't really remember how we create the end date and start date. Do we, uh, oh, that's not what I want. Um, uh, let's see here. Do we, when do we create these, do we explicitly, yeah, we've specifically requested date, which means that we're going to get a date at midnight. So it's going to be the date and the time set just set to zero, 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 zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, whatever. So it's the closest thing that we're going to get to a, like a date in the .NET standard library. If we want an actual just like a just a date component, we need to use something like Nota Time, which has a date component, which only contains a date and no time component. And this is part of the problem with .NET's system .date time and date time offset, according to um, to John Skeet, the legendary C# -sharp programmer and maintainer of Nota Time. The system .date time and system .date time offset types are good enough that you can get quite far by using them without running into too many problems that a lot of people feel like they're good enough or, or they're <coughs> they, that, that they are good representations of date and time, which they really aren't. They're not taking into account different calendars, uh, time zones. And for example, you don't have a separate time and date component. And you have, we have time span to kind of indicate like a duration, but we don't have any periods, which Nota Time does. So in Nota Time, you might define one month. Well, if you were to define one month in a time span, how how much is that? Is it 28 days, 31 days, 30 days? Who knows? You can't, you can't properly define one month in the .NET 10 library because of that. Anyway, just a tangent. Uh, that's the confirm period function all typed up. And now the that will return a reservation. And now for the create events function, uh, which is the next one on the list. Create events of the type create events. Takes a reservation and <coughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, the create events thing basically just creates, yeah the final event and returns it. Um, uh, um, a reservation made of type reservation made. And um, let's go into that type. Just steal all that those fields. Like so, and return it. Reservation made. That's create events. And now for the masterpiece, which is <coughs> <coughs> not me coughing, but um, rather the. Okay, I don't know why I did it that way. 
the uh, rent equipment of type rent equipment like this one and it's going to be uh this will take Yeah, so this will need to take uh, all the dependencies that we've defined so far, right? So, uh, it, uh, it'll, <clears throat> how does he put this? Um, right. So rent. <coughs> oh, come on. Ooh. So rent equipment needs to take a few inputs to basically work. Right. So we do this. And we say that we need a function for verify user ID, we need a function for verify equipment ID. Um, we need a function for get equipment rent duration limit. Verify time slot. Mm -hmm. Those are basically the dependencies. And then the last piece that it needs is the unvalidated rent uh, request. Uh, so this is going to be a function which takes the unvalidated Rent request. Uh, which then takes the unvalidated uh, rent rec uh, un oh, yeah, yeah. oh fun fun validated rent request pipes that into the uh, validate <clears throat> rent request <coughs> <coughs> sorry um, but that's going to need a couple of inputs uh, so as you can see, um, up right above the um, uh, this one, yeah. So you can see right here, it's starting to fill out the different. Uh, right now, they're all generics: tick A, tick B, tick C, tick D, tick E. But as I start using the different inputs or the different parameters, it'll start filling out the different types in the type signature. So it starts recognizing what we're actually creating. Uh, so validate rent request. It needs verify user ID and verify equipment ID. So as you can see, those are now filled in with their proper types because it knows what we're doing. Uh, I think that should be it. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we need to do is map the error. So result map error because what we're getting returning here is a uh, validation error uh, and yeah we've updated that so that validation error uh, will have to be 
cast oh, or not the cast per se, but um, uh, mapped or yeah, well, mapped to a to a proper error. And this is complaining because uh, we'll get back to it, I guess. Uh, so the next thing <clears throat> that we're going to do is result dot bind, I guess. Um, <coughs> uh, hmm. And we're gonna confirm the rent period. Um, so this is gonna be the um, uh, verified rent request. And we're going to use the verified event the request and pass that into the uh, confirm rent period with the input of get uh, that one and verify time slot, which we then pass into a result map error map error. Um, and we map that <clears throat> error to a, uh, what's it called? Reservation. That's complaining at the moment, but we'll see if it does still. <coughs> oh, man. Really sorry about my throat. It's um, it's giving up. It's giving up on me. Um, and then the last step is result dot map, and uh, just use create events. Uh, yeah, let's see. Make that. Uh, yeah, let's still check that after. And uh, yeah, that should create the correct types all the way. Um, this should not be here. Let's format clean up that code, as it calls it. There we go. Um, I'm kind of unhappy with how, let's just go through all these files, by the way, and clean up the code and make it like default, um, F sharp formatting kind of un with unhappy with how this turns out. This, these nested binds, we have multiple of those inside of this file. So we, I might want to, <clears throat> it's like I want to map the error in the same action as I, as I do the bind thing. That's basically what I want. Because if you do the map, yeah, if you if you do result map, you don't need to worry about the the error kind basically. But when you do the bind, you need to map the 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 error at the same time. So maybe I sh maybe I want to define like a function that will let you both define a map error and a Uh, like I handle both the OK case and the error case, basically. 
Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna leave it like this for now. This is not the first time that we've needed to do this. So if we go back up here, no, basically here, we do the same. Uh, no, not here. Where do we bind? Here. Great equipment. Do the same. Call a function or do something and then map the error to a specific error. That's what we do here too. Call something and map it to a specific error. That feels frustrating. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> gonna leave it like that for now. Uh, so that's, there are three warnings in here, which are redundant parens, redundant parens, and redundant parens. Okay. Uh, yeah. All, all good and all good. Okay. That looks like they were actually, <coughs> oh man, we're actually done with a, with a second workflow. Uh, it takes a bit of time to implement each of these. Um, I'd say <clears throat> currently uh, about two hours, uh, apparently, because that's how long I've been uh, streaming or at least recording. So, yeah, it takes a bit, a bit of a while. But the nice thing is we've accounted for all the errors uh, and we've made sure that if we make any changes, stuff will break. It will intentionally break uh, for us to notice uh, that we need to change some stuff or fix some stuff to make it work again. So I think that's good. Uh, but yeah, I'm basically going to end it there. I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> before I forget, commit this. Uh, actually, we should probably... Do, 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 do. There is some um, uh, stuff that I changed in the in the common types. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna leave it as is. Add uh, res. No, we we'll, we'll call it rent equipment. Rent equipment. Work flow like so. Should change these files to be white instead of red. There we go. All nice and good. <clears throat> so yeah, that's gonna be it for now. Um, hope. Uh, thank you for <laughs> sticking with me through all this, including the um, uh, keyboard cleanup uh, phase of the whole thing, which was unexpected. But sure, it's nice to know that my paperclip workaround worked. So if you ever need to need an impromptu uh, keycap puller, uh, take a paperclip, bend it like this, and put this part, this short part, in, down into your keyboard, and that, that, that'll that work. I, got, I made two of these, like this. Very, um, I'm basically MacGyver, is what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you for seeing all, uh, seeing with me through all this. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Snuggies.